In this video, we're going to look at some of the ways that we can represent data using graphs, and we'll be using some of the techniques that we've already had a look at in previous videos. So the first one we're going to look at is a bar graph. So bar charts are useful when we have distinct categories. In this case, we're going to be looking at the number of side effects that different drugs have for a, a treatment. So all these data are made up, they're not from actual real experiments. So the first thing that we need to do is to calculate the mean of these data. So what we have here is the three different drugs in column A, and then we have triplicate values going across for each one of these drugs. So drug A is in row two, and these are the triplicate values for this experiment. So what we need to do is to write equals, telling Excel that we're going to be using a formula, start typing average, and then highlight the three values that we have got. And that tells me that we have an average of those three values of 90.67. Now, one of the uses of fill handles, if you remember this black square in the bottom right hand corner, is that you can also copy formulae. So if I click and drag down, I've now copied those formulae down into rows three and four. So if I click in F3, you can see in the function bar that I'm actually calculating the average of B3 to D3, which is the value for drug B. What we also need to calculate is the standard deviation. Now this is a measure of how spread out or how consistent your data is. So to calculate standard deviation, we keep plus equals again for a formulae, start typing standard deviation, and the shortcut for standard deviation is STDEV. So again, click on that. We highlight the same values that we had before, close the brackets, hit return, and this tells me the standard deviation for these data is 4.51. Again, I can use the fill handle and copy that formula down into all of these different rows. So now we've got our mean and our standard deviation. What we need to do next is to plot that on the graph. So the way that you can do that is to highlight column A, which is the categories. On a Mac, you press the command button. On Windows, it's control and then highlight the mean values as well. So that's what's going to be plotted on our graph. If you go up to the Insert tab, and then we go across to the graph, and we are going to select a simple bar chart. And what we now have is a bar chart which represents the mean of the data, and we have the three different drugs along the bottom. We also now need to plot the error bars or the standard deviation. To do that, in the Mac, you go up to this add chart element, error bars, more error bar options, and then I'm going to plot plus error bars only, and I'm going to create custom error bars. So I need to specify the values for that. Let's move that out of the way so we can see our values. So if you click on this button here, and then highlight by clicking and dragging the standard deviations, that will plot the standard deviations onto your graph. As you can see now, these are the elite small error bars at the top of your data. So what you can do now, if you click into the chart, you can see these options appear. Go to chart design, add chart element, and we're going to add axi titles. So I want both horizontal and I want vertical axes. So on the Axis title, just call this drug treatment. On the vertical axis, we can say side effects. You could give this chart a title by clicking, uh, double clicking in this area up here, but in most science experiments, you wouldn't have that title, so you can click the delete to get rid of that. And then when you put this figure into a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation, you would give this a legend, which would actually tell the readers what the chart was actually showing. OK, so that's a bar graph with an average and standard deviation plotted. Moving on to a line graph. Now, line graphs are useful when we're actually measuring a period of time. So if it's a duration of an experiment. So in this case, we're looking at the number of cells that are present in an experiment over the course of seven days. So again, we're going to start by calculating the mean. So we say equals average 
highlight our values, close the bracket, hit return, and I'm going to copy those down. And then the standard deviation as well, equals st standard deviation, copy. And again, using the fill handles, I'm going to copy those formally down. All we have to do in this case is highlight the mean values, insert, and put those into a line chart. And we also have the categories here along the bottom already, which corresponds to the intervals here. Now, line charts are only useful if you have a consistent interval. Okay, we'll look later at a scatter graph where you want to actually be able to manipulate that a little bit more. So again, to make this chart a little bit better, we get rid of the chart title. We click on the data points, going to add error bars, more error bars, and this time, just click into there. Again, we're going to go, we're going to have them for both directions this time because it's a line chart, custom, and specify values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these values here. And for the negative values, do the same thing. Press OK. And as you see, if we click into a graph, we now have error bars, plus and minus for this line chart, showing us how spread out our data is. Again, we want to go back, and we want to put in axis titles, so primary axis, both the horizontal and vertical, and you can label those with something suitable for your experiment. So that's a line graph. Finally, we're going to look at, at a scatter graph. Now a scatter graph is useful if, for example, you need to force a line through the origin or if you don't have categories on the x-axis. So in this case, we're going to be looking at a standard curve. So this is basically the concentration of a standard and we've got the triplicate absorbance values. So we're going to do the same thing, calculate the mean, Like those values and this time I'm going to show you a little trick so if you now calculate the first standard deviation highlight those values again what you can do is if you click and drag across the mean and the standard deviation when you now drag the fill bar you will actually copy both of those formulae down into the relevant cells so this is the mean of our concentration and this is the standard deviation so what we need to do this time, we do need to click and tell it that this is a category on the x-axis. We do need to highlight our means. We go to insert, and this time I'm going to select a scatter graph, which is this one here. And I'm going to click on scatter graph, and you can see all it's done is plotted the individual points. But what we do have now on the x-axis is those categories, okay, which match up with the concentration we have in column A. Okay, so what we need to do now is we click on one of those data points and right click, we can add trend line. And what it's done, as you can see, is it's plotted a linear trend line as a line of best fit. Now if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that it's not pushing this through the origin. So what I need to do is to tell the graph that I want that to go through the origin. And you can see that's now jumped up and is being forced through the origin. We can also display the equation of the line on the chart and we can display the R squared which gives us a value of how well the data fits. Again, we won't need the chart title. We can get rid of these horizontal and vertical grid lines because they're a little bit distracting. And then we will need to go to chart design. We need to put axis titles on, so primary vertical, primary horizontal. So we need to go to error bars, more error bar options. We're going to have both because it's a line, custom, specify values. Again, click and drag to highlight for the positive and for the negative. Click OK. And you can see that that gives us the error bars around our data points. So that's how you would use a scatter graph. If you want to export these into PowerPoint or Word, for example, you can click on the graph, press Ctrl-C, or alternatively, you could go up to Edit and Copy. 
And if you then jump over into Word, and then we can paste that graph into that file. Now this graph is actually linked to the original Excel file. So if, for example, I were to change this value to, let's say, 1.4, hit return, you can see that the graph here has changed, and the graph here has also changed. Okay, and that is how you would set up a scatter graph in Excel.